Evening all. Well, um, a film director I know sent me um, an article from The Independent uh, where they said 1999 was the greatest year for movie history. The uh, quality of the films that year were outstanding, making 1999 uh, a standout year and contended for best movie year. Now, I looked at the list and, yeah, it's a fantastic year, 1999. You had The Matrix, you had Magnolia, Being John Malkovich, Eyes Wide Shut, The Blair Witch Project, Sixth Sense and Three Kings, pardon me, to name but a few. And those are all outstanding films. If you haven't seen any of them, do go and watch them. They're all good. And um, all quite clever films, you know, kind of well written. I'm not meaning super intellectual films, but the way they're made and the characters and the plot and the ideas, um, especially Being John Malkovich. It's the weirdest film. You'll never see another film like it. Um, but it's they're all worthy films. But I don't think 1999 is the year in cinema. Now, this director said his personal favourite was 1985. That's a year of a lot of Brat Pack films. Uh, there some good action films. I think it was the year of First Blood Part 2 Rambo. Um, and uh, Commando with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, yeah, these... It's a good year. I don't think it's uh, it's just it's not top draw, but it's a fun year. Eighty five. Um, I've read elsewhere that a lot of uh, very pretentious movie critics might put nineteen twenty seven because that was the year of the first Academy Awards and the first Academy Award was Wings, a World War One air combat film with actually staged air combat for real <laughs> in the skies. You know, days before health and safety regulations. Um, and there's also Seventh Heaven, another World War One film. Um, I've seen it, it's pretty good I think, was Sunrise A Tale of Two Humans 27, I don't know um, and then Abba Gonsa's Napoleon yeah, these are all epic films but for me, I'm going to nominate 1971 as the greatest cinema year why is this? well, back in 1967 um, the Hayes Decency Code was finally done away with and so now filmmakers were able to explore any idea that they had it's a great it's a great time, it's a great flowering of uh, ideas, free expression, um, and uh, uh, kind of experimental and innovative films, but also ones that did well at the box office as well. So by 1971, this, this whole kind of um, new revolution in filmmaking is well underway. There's a kind of, if the 1930s was the golden age of Hollywood, you could say 1967 to 1977 is a silver age um, where you get very interesting, um, uh, you know, good quality films with challenging scripts. Um, and um, they're big box office hits. So, you know, people did go and see these slightly high, what I call IQ 110 films, you know, a little bit above average in terms of engaging your brain films in that decade and then star wars came along in 77 changed the cinematic landscape once again but that 67 77 was a very interesting year and 71 is um where it's all underway and the quality of films is really good uh, it's also the year of hot pants as well but that, that's by the by so i'm going to um talk you through um the list of films from 1971 i've seen all of these ones bar one i can recommend every single one of them I can half reckon, except the one I haven't seen, um, but it, it's reputation. Uh, I've, it means it gets on this list. There's one film I only half like, but it was a major film from 1971 and still might be worth checking out. I think even that's so you can say, oh, well, at least I've seen it. Um, it winds your cultural palate, as it were. Um, there's some I left off. On this list, you know, there's some guilty pleasure films like the Police Sir movie, the Up Pompeii movie, Carry On Henry. Um, but the films I'm going to say now, uh, the reason why I think 1971 is the greatest year in film history, but also I can recommend each one of these films as good entertainment. So starting off, the Academy Award winner that year was The French Connection. OK, this is Gene Hackman's breakout movie role. It is the greatest police procedural drama of all time. Um, the, it, 71 has some great police procedural movies. Um, it's also the year of Dirty Harry. 
um, you know, conservatives' wet dream of a crime thriller movie. Um, and that establishes that iconic character. You also have, I'm just looking down the list in terms of crime dramas, Clute, um, Jane Fonda, steady, steady. Jane Fonda won and Ken Wolf, best actress that year, perhaps one of the last years where she's kind of hot in films. Um, but it's a good, she's with Donald Sutherland and it's good uh, drama where he's a, a very honest country policeman kind of like a male version of Marge Gunderson from Fargo, who in, um, encounters this um, city prostitute played by Fonda, and she's a witness to a crime, and, you know, he gets just kind of drawn into her life, her world, the kind of the... Um, the the uh, awfulness of her situation and of that seedy life as well. So that's a good one. Um, Shaft, the first black exploitation film with Richard Roundtree, um, who, frankly, you know, if you think Samuel L. Jackson is cool, just wait till you see Richard Roundtree in Shaft. Uh, it's it's a terrific sort of hard-boiled private eye film set in um, uh, New York. Sa the same New York, same locations that French Connection were using. They make a good companion piece. Um, but it's got the, that 1971 look. Um, Roundtree rocks a turtleneck sweater and a leather trench coat. And it's got the Isaac Hayes uh, funk soundtrack. It's just absolutely brilliant. There's Vanishing Point, um, an existential car chase film where Barry Newman, perhaps one of the strangest stars to emerge from the early 70s, later will go on to become a very successful TV actor. But as a Film leading man, he, he doesn't quite look it, but he acts it. So vanishing point, he's he's kind of racing this stolen car across America um, and, and popping amphetamines as he goes. It's it's a fantastic action film, uh, really intense. I'm looking at other police procedurals. Uh, the Anderson tapes with Sean Connery, really good uh, one. Um, absolutely. Uh, recommend that. Um, and what, uh, what I was talking about, Clint Eastwood, good year for him. He was in a Western called The Begard, very strange one, where he's a, a Civil War soldier who's injured and gets uh, offered uh, help and comfort by a, a girl's finishing school. Yeah, strange things happen. It's still good, very uh, artistic. Um, but he's also made his directorial debut in play for, with Plain Misty for me, which it's still the best uh, Psycho ex-girlfriend uh, stalker films. It's kind of a yeah, better, better, uh, more artistic version of Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction really is a popcorn film. But, uh, yeah, Play Misty for me is classy. There's fantastic performance of Jessica Walter as uh, the deranged, spurned ex. So I'm going down my uh, list here. This is... Um, the French Connection won the Oscar. It beat Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, great musical. Um, absolutely. Put it on your must-watch list. Speaking of musicals and something for the family, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know, with Gene Wilder. That was 1971, as was Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. You know, with the iconic scene of David Tomlinson refereeing a, um, a football match between cartoon jungle animals. 71's also a year there was Bond film, Diamonds Are Forever. Not the greatest Bond film, but any year that has a Bond film in it, you know, is elevates that year in cinema. Um, you got the Summer of 42, that was also nominated for an Academy Award. That and the last picture show, kind of um films made in 71, but looking at um the generation before, Summer 42, set 42, um Last Picture Show set in 19. 50. And also there was another uh, kind of um, film, serious film that looks back at uh, the previous generation as Carnal Knowledge with um, Jack Nicholson, Candice Berg and Art Gunfunkel. I think the story starts in the late 1940s and continues to 1971. It's a really good film. Um, great performance by Jack Nicholson. So it, um, where are we? Now we're at a film where, which I only half like. Um, and that's Billy Jack with Tom Laughlin. Uh, Laughlin's a kind of really radical left-wing 
filmmaker, um, got his start in sort of low budget B movies and then wrote, directed and starred in um, Billy Jack, this kind of half breed Vietnam war veteran who has um, who is spurned by the small town that he enters uh, because he's a half breed and he's a Vietnam war veteran. So this actually uh, predates uh, Rambo First Blood by a number of years. Um, there's some great martial arts and fight scenes and action, but you have to put up with a lot of Lachlan's uh, left-wing um, script. Um, and, but Billy Jack, out of, there's about three or four Billy Jack films, and that's, this is the best one. The others just go down a sort of kind of paranoid, anti-American rant. Not work, really worth the, the effort. Um, science fiction got a good... Uh, uh, outing in uh, 71 so you had the andromeda strain which is the best viral outbreak film of all time really good fantastic set design fantastic cinematography a genuinely gripping last five minutes um and it's great because it's it's like a a, a cast of kind of um tv actors um uh, very good character actors and they all play it matter of factly there's no hamminess no hysteria um i think the film's all the better for that you got uh, also um, Silent Running with Bruce Dern. Everybody's seen that. It's a film that can make grown men cry. That's the one where Bruce Dern's on a spaceship um, looking after the last of Earth's forests, and he's helped by three little robots. Um, and then you have Escape from Planet of the Apes, which after the first Planet of the Apes film is the next best one. Um, very interesting ideas on the Marathi zone. So Escape from Planet of the Apes, three of the... Um, chimp characters uh, find Taylor's spaceship and they manage to fly it back to the early 70s um, where they're fated, oh, look, these intelligent talking apes. But then the questions start, why are they talking? Why are they intelligent? Where are the humans? And the kind of moral choices that the characters have to make later make, makes it stand out in the Plans of the Apes series. Um, what else have we got? Have we got any other science fiction films from uh, 1971? No, but uh, let's have a look at some of the other film um, westerns. McCabe and Mrs. Miller with Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, directed by Robert Altman. That's really good. Um, you've got Bananas by Woody Allen. Um, well, Woody Allen was in his fun, let's crack a load of jokes uh, era. So that's a good one. Um, Brian's song, a kind of male bro tearjerker about a pro sportsman who's got a terminal illness. Um, you've got Duel. I mean, that was Steven Spielberg's uh, directorial debut um, with Dennis Weaver. It was originally made as a um, TV movie, but it was so well done. They gave it a bit of a limited cinematic release. And um, if you've never seen it, if you like Steven Spielberg films, this is a, this is a film where he doesn't use a lot of his usual directorial tricks. But in terms of tension and action and fear and uh, terror, Duel is amazing. Um, I'm looking. Harold Maud is a... Is a cult oddity but you know it's a it's a great cult film you know see it and impress your friends by saying i've seen harold and maud you got le mans with steve mcqueen one of the best uh, motor racing films ever made you have the mephisto waltz horror film with alan older um, before he did mash really good uh, murphy's war with peter o'toole world war one drama i think that's set in east africa in world war one where he's the last survivor of a ship that was destroyed by the Germans, and he's waging a kind of one-man war against the uh, Germans in, in that region. So um, that's really good. Peter O'Toole's on good form. Um, you've got another Western, Valdez is Coming, with Burt Lancaster. Quite an odd one, but as a kind of revenge drama goes, you know, I, I can recommend it. Um, so I'm now looking at what films were released in Britain at that time. So you have a Kubrick film. Clockwork Orange. You know, 1999 had Eyes Wide Shut, but I'd argue that Clockwork Orange is a better film and released in 1971. Um, so there you go for um, making a case for 1971. You have um, Straw Dogs, Dustin Hoffman, Susan George, directed by Sam Peckinpah, a Western setting Cornwall. 
a controversial film, gripping, you know, just, yeah. Go check out Straw Dogs, 10 Rillington Place. True story of the serial killer John Reginald Halliday Christie, played by Richard Attenborough. Um, really, really good creepy film. Attenborough could really do creepy. Um, you got The Boyfriend, two films by Ken Russell out that, that year. The Boyfriend, the kind of romantic comedy with Twiggy. Um, and then you got The Devils, which is Oliver Reed, Vanessa Redgrave, where, um, yeah, it's Spanish Inquisition time. Red Hot Pokers Up the Jacksey and all that. Two very different films from Ken Russell, who was uh, um, and, and, uh, <coughs> created Peak around about this time. I met him once. Nice guy. Um, you got Get Carter. As you know, as far as revenge thrillers go, Get Carter is one of the best. Michael Caine, top form. Pipe a bit of John in a thin glass. And um, it's one of the most quotable films ever. Uh, you've got The Go-Between, kind of Harold Pinter drama with um, um, Alan Bates in it. You know, nice if you like your costume drama. This was a film that predated um, uh, uh, all that Merchant Ivory stuff. Remains a day. Anthony Hawkins going, ah, is Thompson, ah, unrequited love. You know, th this did it first. Um, and um, it's it's well well worth it. Very Really lovely film to look at. Um, there's Gumshoe with Albert Finney. You know, Albert Finney does a kind of hardball private eye with a comic twist acting it. He's, you know, the script sparkles. It's not a great film, but it's got a really witty, sparkling script and top performance by um, Albert Finney in that. Uh, Roman Polanski came to the UK in 1971 to make uh, his version of Macbeth, Shakespeare play. If you If you want... If you've got kids, right, and you want to introduce them to Shakespeare, and you go, okay, you're going to do Macbeth. Um, or maybe you're young and yourself, and you've got to study Macbeth for school. Go and watch Roman Polanski's version with John Finch in the title role. Um, it's as good as you'll get, um, uh, frankly, production of it. Uh, you know, Polanski, whatever else goes on in his life, like Woody Allen, um, still technically a great filmmaker. You had Mary Queen of Scots that year, you know, another Elizabethan Jacobean drama. Uh, Glenda Jackson as Elizabeth I, top form. This was kind of breakout film for her. Um, and Vanessa Redgrave as Mary Queen of Scots. So you got these two uh, doyens of uh, lovey lefties on screen. But forget, forget about their, their real lives. <laughs> you know, just enjoy the film, enjoy the performances, enjoy the cinematography, John Barry soundtrack. It's good stuff. Um, you've got Nicholas and Alexandria, um, really good film about the last days of the Romanoffs, uh, starring a kind of cast of British character, TV character actors in a lavish, opulent drama, so well filmed. Um, one actor that would go on to be uh, quite big is Tom Baker, uh, who would in a few years, hence from this film, be cast as the fourth Doctor Who. In this film, he's playing Rasputin, and it's perfect casting, I've got to say. A Sunday Bloody Sunday um, with Peter Finch. That was controversial at the time because I think it featured the first gay kiss in cinema history. Um, but it's that late era Peter Finch where he's getting really kind of angsty and, you know, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Uh, um and Wittering and Zygo. Now, I've talked about this film in a previous video I did, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, fantastic um, drama set in a... Uh, public school, remote parts of Britain, where David Hemmings plays a, a new teacher, teacher to the school who's taking over a class from uh, his predecessor who died when falling off a cliff. And uh, he has this battle of wills with the class um, who are just like um, cunning psychopaths. That's just a great film. There's Villain with Richard Burton. You know, watch Burton do Cockney and Buggery and McShane. Uh, it's, um, uh, I like it, you know, what are you looking at? Uh, go check it out. I like this great era for gritty crime dramas. Uh, Zeppelin with Michael York. You know, that's a fun film. You know, it's the film just before Michael York gets the cabaret role, which kind of launches him an international star. But you know, it's Michael York, you know, uh, young. You know, he could do anything in that time. Um, but yeah, Zeppelin, it's a World War One film. You you can guess the plot. 
So, I mean, looking at, well, I'm going to look at a bit of world cinema now. And you had two films coming out of Australia, uh, um, but not made by Australian directors. Uh, so you had Walkabout, directed by the uh, British Nicholas Rogue, uh, with a very young Jenny Agatha. Um, and yeah, that's kind of hypnotic. You know, the, the, a couple of English school children get lost in the Australian outback. And there's a hypnotic quality, beautifully shot film. Um, yeah, well worth it. Um, uh, and then the other one set in the Australian outback is Wake in Fright, which is perhaps the most harrowing drinking film you'll ever see. Um, you know, if put it this way, the if you played the uh, Wood Now and I drinking game, you'll be paralytic and perhaps end up in hospital. If you play the Wake and Fright drinking game, you'll probably die. Uh, it is the most savage film about the Australian lifestyle you will ever see. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. You know, directed by the same guy who directed uh, Rambo: First Blood, Ted, Ted Kocheff. Well, there's a lot of the, the the outsider in a kind of remote town, um, kind of motif there. Have I left anything out here? This see what I mean about 1971. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Now I'm going to mention the film I haven't seen, and this is a Canadian one called Mon Oncle Antoine. Now, the reason why I've included this, I've not seen the film, but as I was looking at um, the list of films released in 1971, this one was said, voted the best Canadian film of all time. So I can't say whether it's good or bad or whatever, or whether it's enjoyable, to, but it's just an indication that the best Canadian film ever made was made in 1971. So... That is my nomination. Every single one, except that last one, and it probably will be worth watching if you're a, a, a film lover. Every single one of those films, I will guarantee you that you'll get some enjoyment out of them, even Billy Jack. Um, they're, they're all well worth checking out. It's a good, high-quality year for film. And I've left out, as I said, some guilty pleasures. I'll think like Abominable Dr. Fives, you know, some Hammer films and... Uh, some sort of um, silly comedy films, um, but seventy one I think is a is a high watermark. It, you know, just the amount of good good stuff that came out that year. Anyway, do you have a nomination for a year that was particularly brilliant in film? Is it better than nineteen seventy one? Is it better than nineteen eighty five? Leave your comments below. And until next time, have a great rest of the week.